Jesus just before ascending into heaven promised the apostles the gift of the Holy Spirit. And in the very first chapter of the Acts of the Apostles, verse 1 8, he told them, You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses. The Holy Spirit gives us two kinds of empowering. One is personal and is concerned with making all that Jesus has achieved for us. Salvation, victory over sin, all this Jesus has already achieved for us. But Jesus, to the power of the Spirit, is going to make effective in our life. Jesus came to put our old Adam life to death. The so-called life of the flesh. As we have just heard in the second reading, St. Paul's letter to the Galatians, self-indulgence at work, fornication, cross-indecency, sexual irresponsibility, idolatry and sorcery, etc. All this has to be put to death and to give us a share in his reason new life. For example, in the fourth Eucharistic prayer, we say that we might no longer live for ourselves, but for him. He sent the Holy Spirit from you, Father, as his first gift to those who believe to complete his work on earth and bring it to fullness of grace. And this is the first work of the Holy Spirit to empower us to live a new life in the Spirit, of course, on condition that we are willing to die to our old Adam life, willing to die to our sins, every forms of sinful attachments. We have to constantly die to our old Adam life and to rise to new life in the Spirit. We call it the Paschal mystery. Christian life is a life of living daily this Paschal mystery to share in the death and resurrection of Jesus. Of course, this does not just happen. We have to be willing to let go, to let go and to let God make it happen. Let God make it happen. And God acts when we are faith in what Jesus has done. So this first empowering of the Spirit has much to do with letting go, with self-surrender and death. The other empowering is the gifting with charismatic power gifts or charisms. Charisms are spiritual gifts gifts for effective service or ministry belonging to the Holy Spirit and those who manifest them are merely messengers. They are given the particular gifts to be used for the benefit of others, for the benefit of the community. And thanks today, thanks to the charismatic renewal movements, we have rediscovered the charismatic power gifts of the Spirit. 
charisma. It is very important to keep a healthy balance between these two empowerings of the Holy Spirit. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. So the Holy Spirit empowers us for holiness. There is no way we can live a good and holy life without the power of the Holy Spirit. So for holiness and also for mission, true, both his sanctifying and charismatic gifts. In the past, our church has not paid enough attention to the charismatic and missionary dimension of the spirit. It's more institutional. So it's not well balanced. As long as we have not recovered this charismatic and missionary dimension of the spirit, our church will never become alive and truly vibrant in the spirit. If we see any kind of all this so-called vibrancy, they are merely external, but there is no substance, no substance. But we need a balance of both. If there is a lot of manifestation of the gifts of the Spirit, so many of you all are exercising the gifts of the Spirit, but without the church hierarchy, there will also be a problem. We need a structure. The structure both are necessary eh, for a balanced Christian life. So sisters and brothers, as baptized Christians, you already received the Holy Spirit. All of you has received the Holy Spirit by virtue of your baptism. And the Holy Spirit is dwelling within each one of us. But sadly, this so-called fire of the Spirit lies dormant as if not active in the lives of many Christians. So many of our Christians are not living our Christian life, our Christian living in the power of the Spirit. We look so weak, so helpless. But receive the Spirit is within us. So sisters and brothers, this Sunday we celebrate Pentecost Sunday. We said we need a new Pentecost, St. Paul the VI. No, we need a perpetual Pentecost. So sisters and brothers, why not allow this fire of the Spirit be ignited or reunited or rekindled and at work in your daily Christian lives. Then, then you will be fired up, fired up with a desire. Now, it's at least a holy desire. We have all kinds of desire, worldly desire for wealth, for pleasure, for fame, for prestige, and so on. Holy desire to pray. Many of us Christians don't have the desire to pray. So those in the charismatic renewal, when they are baptized in the Spirit, they experience the desire to pray. Not only that, that they experience the desire to read God's Word. 
I still do remember my experience. It was through the charismatic renewal, I experienced the desire to read the Bible from page to page. I just read like I just read. The desire is there. I'm not practicing lesser divina. I just like to read the Bible. Why? I don't know. You experience this desire to love and serve humbly, generously, and joyfully in the spirit of Jesus. You will experience all this new holy desire. You will be fired up with the holy desire to live a truly meaningful, purposeful, and significant Christian life. Not just fulfill our obligation, we come to church every Sunday and that's it, you know. Then I was asked whether we are worthy to receive such precious and powerful gift of the Spirit. The answer is no, sisters and brothers. None of us is worthy. None of us deserve it. Remember, every month and even afterwards, before receiving Holy Communion, we always say, Lord, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof. Just say the word and my soul shall be healed. A sinful creature, we are always unworthy. The Holy Spirit or salvation is a pure gift of God's love and mercy. There is nothing we can do to earn God's love, God's salvation, to earn the gift of the Holy Spirit. No. Here, it is God's loving desire to fuel us, to heal us, to empower us with His Spirit. Empowering us to share in His divine life, the divine life of holiness, communion, and mission, the life of God. Don't you want this divine life of God? Jesus says so clearly, seek first the kingdom of God. Seek first the kingdom of life. Seek first God's will, and all the rest will come unto you. Don't wait until you retire, got more time already. Uh, then I give my time to love, serve the Lord. Uh. No. Again, I was asked, so how to prepare ourselves to receive the Holy Spirit? But as I said, we have already received the Holy Spirit. Huh? So we have to understand it in the different contexts. Huh? Uh, so sisters and brothers, right now today, because we celebrate Pentecost Sunday, huh? hmm? there are four basic steps. The first one is very important. Desire. <coughs> Spirituality is about desire. Jesus will say, what do you want? What do you want? Is it your desire? It must be a wholehearted desire for the Spirit. Jesus says very clearly in John 7, 37, let anyone who, who is thirsty come to me. Thirsty. Do you thirst for the Spirit? Other words is, do you yearn, do you long for the Spirit? If just half-heartedly, uh, no effect, uh, you are not serious, uh, not play, play only, you uh, know. Wholehearted desire, very important, sisters and brothers. 
So even as you listen to me, keep in touch with your desire. Do you want a Lord? Do you want the divine life or not? The Holy Spirit to heal you, to cleanse you, empower you. When you experience the fruits of the Spirit, peace, joy, happiness, and sorrow, do you want the Lord? Then come to me. Second, we must uh, commit our commitment very important today. Very often we say how people don't come. Say, first of all, say, they don't have the desire. Why people don't grow? They don't have any commitment to grow. We must make an intentional commitment to live and to grow in the life of the Spirit. The life of the Spirit is the life of Jesus. Nothing more, nothing less. It's a commitment to live that life and to grow in that life. Truth. We need to be repentant of our sins, confession of sins, and seek forgiveness. Just as we do at the beginning of every month in Acts, Acts chapter 2, 38, Peter calls the people, repent so that your sins may be forgiven. Then you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Next, the last one. Now, we ask for the Holy Spirit to come. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, heal me, fill me, empower me. I've said this many times here. Huh? That is my favorite, my mantra. My mantra, my unceasing prayer. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Lord Jesus. You may not see me very devotional sitting down like that, you know. You know? In the toilet, every you pray, you pray with your breath, come, Holy Spirit. Without you, I can do nothing. I'm so we come. So in Luke chapter 11, 9, Jesus again says so clearly, ask and you will receive. Seek and you will find. Ask and you will receive. And then he adds, evil people as you are, you know how to give good gifts to your children. How much more will the Heavenly Father in heaven, will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? And then having prayed, we just wait and receive. And sisters and brothers, this kind of prayer is 100% guaranteed it will be answered. Why? Because your prayer is perfectly, perfectly means 100% according to God's will, according to God's loving desire. It is God's desire. So sisters and brothers, right now this week, and we are at Pentecost rally, all those people who come, they are serious. I won't use the word desire. The thirst for it. The thirst for the spirit. The thirst for healing. The thirst for empowerment. Last night and just now, we have healing sessions. I believe he, there are healings. Tomorrow, another round. The test for it, they are serious. Otherwise, they won't come. So again, sisters and brothers, my question is, do you seriously, seriously, not play, play one, huh? do you seriously desire this Pentecostal fire or not? Because it is possible and very possible some people may not because they are just too comfortable, complacent, being as they are. Years ago, many years ago, when I was just assistant parish priest, we promote the, uh, the disciple Bible program, you know, 
Oh, wow, the God, I promote her. Hey, come. It's a very good, good program. Come and experience the transforming power of the word. Experience the transforming power of the word. Then they hey, some people may not like to be transformed, you know. They will, after hearing this, they will not come. You know? <laughs> I'm very comfortable, you know. You see, I may not like to change and transform. It's very challenging, you know. Don't play with fire. Don't play with fire. I tell you, God is a consuming fire. So many people simply lack the desire. The desire for spiritual renewal and growth in Jesus. Sisters and brothers, the Pentecost fire empowers you for the life of the eight habits. In essence, the fire and the eight habits are like two sides of the same coin. There is no way to live the eight habits is challenging. It's difficult. It needs discipline. It needs sacrifices. To get up early also difficult. To pray daily also difficult. Morning work also difficult. Every day need to die to serve. We need the power of the Spirit. First, we must have the desire. Desire. That is the power of the Spirit. Without that, the eight habit doesn't work. But at the same time, if we seek the fire of the Spirit, we have to pray. Come, Holy Spirit. It works both ways. So, sisters and brothers, there's only one thing we seek. is the fire. The fire is at the center. And keep on growing in that fire. The fire of God, the fire of Spirit, the fire of the love, and all things will come unto you. So sisters and brothers, since today we celebrate Pentecost Sunday, let us take this opportunity to invite the Spirit to soak up fall afresh on us. So we must desire right now, you know, right now. Otherwise, nothing will happen, you know. Nothing will happen. I want it. Come, Holy Spirit. And if you are serious about it, it may some, nothing traumatic happen. It doesn't matter when you are serious about it, intentional about it. Uh, after this, uh, you may experience a certain desire, a new awareness of the presence of God, a new awareness of the Christian life. Hey, that is the work of the Holy Spirit, a new awareness. Desire for Jesus, desire for growth, desire. Hey, the Spirit is working, you know. It may not be dramatic. The fire has been ignited, you see. Huh? Ignited already. So just pause for a while. Focus on Jesus. Focus on Jesus. Please stand. <laughs>